Many of you, you know me as a magic woodcarver, but today I'm going to talk about something completely different. But first I want you all to make a little exercise with me, and it's not your brain, so you can all join. Um, I want you to fold your hands and say, uh, no, 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 uh, just fold your hands in a normal way. Um, are you all, uh, yes, ah, good. Now uh, stretch them out, and now I want you to try to rotate them like gears, and you, oh, you have to fold it all the way. Yeah, fold them, and then open, and now you'll notice the fingers tend to lock when you try to rotate. That's because <coughs> our hands are not gears. There's not sufficient, <laughs> not sufficient space between the, the, the cogs or the fingers. So now I want you to put one forefinger over the other and then opposite with the middle finger and keep alternating down to the little finger. And now hold it like this and do it again and you'll feel it, it's much better. And uh, now you know how my paper gears work and I can earn $4. <laughs> or, or I could uh, tell you a little about the background for this invention. We have to go back uh, to 1966. I was a young graduate. Um, we're actually having a 50 years reunion next month, so it's uh, 50 years ago. I'd become uh, interested in the origins of mechanics, and I learned that um, two of the major driving forces had been the need for power supply and the need for timekeeping. And I was so infatuated with these large wooden gears in old mills that I uh, actually wanted to become a millwright and work with uh, preservation of mills. But they told me I had to, to be a carpenter first. So I deci decided instead to go into the School of Architecture. And that's where I learned about solid geometry, which really kicked off the development of my magic wood carving. But I had other passions at wood carving. Um, for instance, uh, yeah, I was still uh, very interested in, in clocks of all kinds, like these uh, funny ones. Um, if you've ever played pole tennis, you, you would recognize the movement of the flying pendulum. I, I won't go more into detail, but you can ask me later if you want to know about the other clocks here. I also visited famous clocks like these. Uh, Jens Olsen's clock is in the town hall of Copenhagen, so I could go there as often as I wanted. Not so with the famous clock at Big Ben. I had to write three months in advance to the Ministry of Public Works to get an appointment. But I felt I had to see it because this is where Jens Olsen learned about the gravity escapement which uh, Lord Grimsop invented for this great clock. Jens Olsen used a slight modification of, of the Grimsop esca escapement. Well, then one day at the School of Architecture, we were all building um, landscape models out of cardboard. And of course, a lot of scrap was lying around. And a fellow student made a funny little contraption that caused a lot of amusement. It made me think of a clock escapement. So I started wondering if it would be possible to build a clock out of cardboard or paper. Um, and uh, my <coughs> I um, focused on how to keep the gears engaged, and you all know that now. So I started building a clock, and uh, in those days we didn't have laser cutters not even computer drawing, so everything had to be done by hand, and it took me several months. But this clock could run for a couple of hours before the heavy dictionary in the end of the chain that you can't see uh, would reach the floor. And uh, the escapement is Jens Olsen's uh, version of the gravity escapement, not because I wanted it to be that accurate, but just because it could easily be done in paper. And it made a funny flap, flap, flap sound as it, as it moved. 
I've kept the, uh, the dial, uh, and here we have our number. Uh, but notice that the gearing is, is not 1 to 12, but 1 to 11. Uh, you probably be able to figure out why. I also made a moon dial using elliptical gears to achieve a, a lemniscate movement. Uh, and this way I could get a better representation of the face of the moon than the old-fashioned moon dials. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite nice to, to watch this. Um, yeah, the old types, they look more like an eclipse and uh, I wanted to, to get around that. Well, you don't have to make just flat gears. You can make uh, bevel gears or crown wheels, pinion. I, I have them here if you can come and play later. <clears throat> and uh, this is my contribution to the gift exchange. And uh, you'll see what Martin thinks about my invention. Okay, thank you. Now, if, if you give me your nerd greeting, I'll give you mine. Thank you.